Now let's look at advanced settings. If we come here to the right, we can click on advanced settings and then we'll see all the options available to us. I'm not going to look at each individual setting, but we'll highlight the more important ones. First, let's look at enable 32-bit applications. What this does is set if the worker process runs in 32-bit mode or in 64-bit mode. So if it's set to false, then it will run in 64-bit mode. If it's set to true, then you will enable it into 32-bit application mode. While a 64-bit application can address more memory, it can address, you know, uh, almost unlimited amount of memory as opposed to only 4 gigs for a 32-bit application. That's generally not a concern we have for a website. Generally speaking, uh, websites that only use 1 or 2 gigs of memory um, and we're going to run into other performance bottlenecks before we, we run into uh, massive memory usage. What we want to look at for choosing between 32 or 64-bit mode is do you have any third-party components that require either to be set in 32 or 64-bit mode. So if you have third-party legacy components that are 32-bit only, you're going to need to run in 32-bit mode. If we work down, here's some stuff about CPU. Generally speaking, those are left alone. Um, let's get down here to process model. We see we have identity. So this is what is my application pool. What security context is it going to run in? Run in. So right now it's set to application pool identity, which is a, a special built-in account um, So uh, for the local, local computer. Uh, so that's the default. But you can see we could also run as local service, local system, network service. Or we could specify uh, a custom account. We're going to leave it as the application pool identity for now. And we're going to get into this a lot more in the next module where we talk about security. Uh, we have the idle timeout. So what this means is if nothing happens in this application pool for 20 minutes to, to shut down the application pool uh, until the next request comes in. So this will help save resources. Unfortunately, what this means is that that first person who hits the site after, the, after that idle timeout um, passes by is going to have that first hit penalty. So it's going to have to wait for the application pool to spin up. It's going to have to wait for the first time compile. It's going to have to wait for the SQL any type of SQL connections that need to happen. Um, so it's going to have a pretty poor experience. In a production environment, we usually set this to zero, meaning don't ever um, shut down the app pool just because it's been idle for some period of time. It can be handy in a, uh, in a development environment to set it to you know, something like 20 minutes, because that way you know, you're, not using your you're, you're not hitting IIS on a regular basis. And so after you've stopped using it for a while, it can shut down those application pools and, and save some resources. Um, so keep moving through the list here. Uh, maximum worker processes. This is where we would enable something that's often referred to as web gardens or when an application pool has multiple processes um, that it can divvy requests out to. Ping enabled. So IIS uh, periodically checks to see if your application pool is healthy. What this ping does is on, on a, a periodic basis, which is configurable, right? But the default is 90 seconds. It will check the application pool, see if things are healthy. If not, it will do a recycle of the application pool. Generally speaking, we just leave this stuff alone. Um, moving down, the last section to kind of talk about is recycling. So recycling is the process of, you know, if an application pool is an analogous to uh, Microsoft Word, it'd be shutting down Word, opening Word back up, and opening up that document you were just working on. So it's re recycling an app pool is it shuts down the worker process and then starts a new one up. Um, so by default, it happens every 29 hours, just, just because. It happens whenever an application um, pool is deemed unhealthy through the ping process. Um, it happens when any type of unhandled exception happens that causes the app pool to crash. And we'll start that app pool back up. Um, and then the other big one is if any type of configuration change happens that causes the app pool to recycle. Um, so generally, normally we want to withstand an application pool recycle um, without any detriment to the end user experience. We'll get into how to handle that a lot more um, in the module around web farms. Um, the big thing to watch out for is the session state, if it's stored in process, that's part of the application pool. So if you're storing anything in session state in process and the app pool recycles, it's going to potentially cause a poor experience for our end users. So that's just something to be conscious of. Again, we'll get into that a lot more in the web farm module. If you don't want it to recycle randomly every 29 hours, you could come down to the specific times and specify exact periods of the day where you want it to happen. So this is on a 24 hour clock. So except there's 11 PM or let's say we want it to recycle at 4.30. Whoops, 
4.30 a.m. So now at 11 p.m. and 4.30 a.m., it's going to recycle that app pool, which can be helpful to clear any uh, memory leaks, things along those lines. Let's click OK. And then that's it for, for advanced settings.